Good evening. I'm not sure who's on there watching. If you want to pop your name in, that would be great. I'm going to get going, and um, if you pop on, then please let me know who, who's here. This is our color palette for June. I really like them. So we have like a tangerine, um, sunflower yellow, pale pink, a blue, and a teal. So it should make a very, very nice background. I have some company in the house, so if you hear some giggling and, and other stuff, that's what that is. And I pulled some bits and pieces. Hi, Michelle, how are you? I went to my handy dandy little embellishment folder and I pulled out some pieces that I think will look nice. Is that enough light? Can um, Michelle, can you see okay? Oh, you're good? Great. And I'm sipping on a coffee here. So this is our color palette. That we had picked for June. Excited to work with those colors. So I went through my, I have our gel prints here, and I went through my embellishment folder and pulled out some stuff. So I have um, these see-through wings. They're almost like but little butterflies. And I have a little saying that says, be gentle with yourself which I really liked. And then I picked out um, this frame. I think this is 49 Market embellishments and some Tim Holtz films. And this was a Tim Holtz piece of ephemera as well. And then these roses and birds. And this was a 49 and Market. So I just pulled out bits and pieces of different things, different colors that I thought would go. So here's our gel prints, or my gel prints, from the session that we had. This one here is my favorite. So I love all these bits around the edges, and I'm going to utilize that. But this was just our brayer runoff sheet, but I saved it in case I wanted bits and pieces of that. I do like this one as well. It has the blues and the oranges and then there's like a lot of orange on this one some dictionary with a little bit of orange some more blues and i really like this one i like the bits and pieces and then we have this this piece so we have lots to work from and choose from but i think i'm going to start with my favorite which is that one and this one's kind of kind of fun too. It has some nice bits, but I think I'm going to do some circles with this one. 
Let me know if it gets uh, too noisy and I'll have to yell at my company. So I did my journaling. I put a layer of gesso down and now we're just going to see where I want my pieces. And I did play around a little bit and I like the way I had put this down here. Why are you not with your company? <laughs> Well, it's company, but I get to see them often, so I'm good. And I'd rather be here, Michelle. I try not to plan too much in the summer because, you know, people drop in and stuff happens. And, and I'm big in the garden, so I don't commit too much in the summer. But when I do, I make sure I'm here. So I like this little layout right here. You hear me? Yeah. It was a beautiful day here. I was outside all day. So uh, I'm ready to be in. I got a lot of sun today. And then I'm thinking that I'm going to put this little bit here. So I'm thinking... It's going to be something like this. But we're going to see. So the first thing I want to do is, um, I usually tear up my paper, but I think this time, because I like it so much, I'm going to actually cut little pieces. Nice there too. It could be a little bit warmer. Yeah, heat wave is coming this way as well. It was it was about I think the thermometer said 18 here today, but my back deck gets very very hot. It gets all the south south sun in the in the afternoon, so it was pretty nice and toasty out there. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? Oh, thank you so much. I love you guys uh, coming in and joining in as well. So I'm just pulling out bits of paper, and I'm not going to think about this too much. I'm just going to start laying down. So I know I want... This is a film from 49 and Market. I am going to put it, place it over the faces just like that. So I'm going to do that first. So, usually I use gel, um, gel medium mat for anything that I'm doing on a journal page, but... But for this one here, I'm just going to lay it on top. There we go. And I have so many of these bits and pieces. I'm a Tim Holtz lover, so um, I do have a lot of his items. And as always, I'm not sure if I'll get everything done tonight. Probably not. Um, after I get the first few layers done, I usually let it sit and dry. And then I work on the highlighting. I took you through a big project with the tag that we did. The Stamperia tag. It's hanging up on my wall. So uh, I won't bore you to to uh, bring you through the bitter end of this one. That was a lot. This will help you get inspired. Good. Well, we started doing it, Jennifer. We do, um, I don't know if you've been joining us since January, but if you go back, you'll see that we do enough gel print. So in January, we did gel print pulls for January, February, March. And then I did the journal pages each month. And this is our 
Then we did gel print pulls for April, May, June. And so this is the last of those. Next month, we'll have to do another series of gel print pulls which I'm going to use alcohol inks for that one. I've never done it. I've seen it done, and I really like the look of it. Hi, Carol. So I think that we're going to dive into, well, I know we're going to dive into gel print pulls using uh, alcohol ink for the, next, for the next round. So we're going to be doing, I've committed to a year of journaling every month. And then we'll see after the year, so December will, will be our last month. We'll see where it takes us. Oh, you liked the uh, tag demo? That's good to hear. It was a long one. I think that ended up being five and a half hours. Now this is my, I always put, I'll show you how I close. I put um, any, any kind of wet medium. I'll cover it with saran wrap or, or press and seal and then a wet baby wipe right in and I make sure it touches the surface and that way it doesn't dry out on you. But this one is quite messy so I'm going to use what's here and I will get new, new saran wrap. So what I'm using is matte gel. That's my preference for putting down collages and that way when you put this right over on top of your paper, it kind of protects it or seals it from whatever other mediums you're going to place on top of it. Now I'm not going to pr uh, place any of this though over the pictures, but I will place it over the paper. I just don't know what it will do to the pictures, to the photos. I can't imagine it would do anything because it's all Tim Holtz products and his stuff is made for uh, mixed media. Sounds like fun. Aw, thank you, Jennifer. Um, that tag was really fun to do. And you just never know how they're going to turn out, right? But if you're liking the products that you're using, then you know it's going to turn out into something that you like. So I just say play with your stuff and see where it takes you. I'm going to lay this one down. And as I said um, in my little intro, earlier today I'm going to be using my circle punches. I just feel like putting circles on here. Heather, <laughs> Heather's so funny. She says circles makes her nauseated. So she may not want to watch this episode because I am going to be putting circles on. And I'm going to get out my heat tool here in a minute. Yes, I was really happy with how the tag came out. So now I have two up on my wall. One that i done before and the one that we did together using the Stamperia line. guys up to today do you guys do you just craft much in the summer and I always put um, pieces of just plain copy paper underneath the pages I'm working on so that it doesn't bleed onto my other sheets and we'll take a look through what we've done so far to date on our journal pages in case they in case you are new to unique and haven't been doing them use my fingers a lot spread out the medium and I do have a cup of water here too this gel medium matte gel it's dries clear and it's water 
based so it cleans really well from your brushes I have I think I have another big jar of this but when this is all gone um, if I can't get anything else I'll use the Tim Holtz collage medium because it's fantastic as well and it comes in smaller jars which I like the thing with the big jars is if you don't use it often enough then of course it's going to dry out on you so you have to make sure that you're using your stuff I do have pretty good luck with the seal and the baby wipe it kind of keeps things from drying out too much but I have had things dry out and that's no fun you don't want to waste your products We're just putting this paper down, just getting started. Getting the wrinkles out, like the baby wipe tip. Well, yes, it does work. And if my baby wipe dries out, I don't have to get a new baby wipe. I just spritz it with water. So it's more for the moisture than anything. I'm just going to glue this down here. I like creating different pages. Yeah, it's fun, Carol. And um, again, not sure where you guys are at in joining us, but the color swatch that I showed you back in January, Heather got in what's called the color boxes. It was a limited supply and it's these two giant boxes just full of different color palettes that to draw from and I love it because that gives me the basis of what I want to do so this is what we use to pull to use colors for our gel prints and uh, so I'll have to pull three new ones for the upcoming months and it's fun So my journaling is in the background and I just journal on what's happened since the last time I created a page to now and it's it's for no one to read it's just for me to put my thoughts and feelings and whatever out on paper and then what I do is I erase some of it and then I cover it with like gesso so you can kind of still see the journaling in the background what we end up with in the end is always somewhat of a mystery when we start because sometimes the whole thing gets covered sometimes you have uh, pieces of journaling that you can see through but none of it will make sense to anybody who ever looks at your book um, because you've erased parts and you're just sewing it over it's just kind of very therapeutic at least I find it is I really like this color so now I'm just going to cut out a bunch of circles and I have the EK success punches and I did get these from unique and I have a bunch of different sizes here so I am just going to start doing some circles and this is a very vibrant color so I'm going to do a couple of different sizes and then I think or my thought was that we're going to stamp these circles so I'll move my book out of the way and then we'll take some background stamps and some stencils and we're going to do a little decorating of the circles before we put them down I thought that would be fun so I'll put that page up here and then we're going to get some more circles out of this one. We're going to draw in some of these glues. I'm just going to dip my brush in the water. While we're not putting anything down, I'm just going to cover my gel medium 
so it doesn't dry out too much. I'm just going to cut out a bunch of these circles. I could have done this ahead of time, but I always like doing as much as I can on camera so that you really get to see the the process that that I use oh this is a fun one I like that one going to have to watch replay sorry gotta go oh no problem Michelle thanks for popping in and saying hello I know it's Father's Day so for all you people with dads in your house or if you're watching your near dad happy father's day we may not use all the all of these circles but i want to punch out enough options hi judy no worries whatsoever as you know we're always found on replay so we just start laying down some pieces. I went through my uh, embellishment book. And if those of you who don't know what my embellishment book is, I did do a video on that not all that long ago. So you can go back in the videos. Anytime you're looking for videos made by myself, if you go to the video section, I always put them in uh, the album called Sherry. So you can find all my videos there and all my posts so that uh, you can stay in tune for what we're doing a coffee cup stain would look good on there well I'm glad you said that look what I have I have a baby so a solo cup so I uh, and I have some of my paints that I used for the gel print or we might use black so great minds think alike I have stamps of coffee stains too, but when I'm doing this kind of art, I like to keep it just simple. You know, if you don't have punches, if you have circle dies, if you don't have circle dies, then just rough cut, trace and, and rough cut. Whatever you do is going to look awesome. I'm just going to get my color palette back in here because I want to make sure... So there's that one. This is this one. I don't have a lot of pink, but that's... Maybe I'll take that and get some from the center. Here, we'll take some of these soft pastel pinky ones. I'll just do a couple. Because we do have quite a bit of the soft pink. This baby blue is kind of this tag here the turquoise is in there and in here there's a little bit of boat on the edges but you know what if we're going to add any paint maybe we'll use the turquoise um, and also one of my embellishments I have to lay down is a bird that's turquoise so that will be fun and I'm really not really sure where I'm going with the circles. I just felt like I wanted circles. So why not? So I'm going to take my circles here. Because we're going to stamp on them. Maybe do a little stenciling. So I just want them off of my book. I'm just going to put them on my glass mat. And I pulled out a whole bunch. Well, now look at that. Look at me go. Oh, no, they're different. I was going to say, look at me. I purchased two of the same, but they're different. This is pencils, and these are paintbrushes. So we're all good. But it would not be any surprise if I bought two of the same. And we have these cool bottles. So one of those might fit on here. 
I did like this saying, so I might stamp that out. I know I have this little one, and I might still put the somewheres on there, but if we stamp out the saying, then we can cut it in, in words and glue it down. I do like that. I have some light bulbs, the little indigo blue stamps. I love them. I have some really tiny all and create ones that will look marvelous on here. So we're just going to, oh, and I have bees. I think that would look nice too. And then I have this one here. It's numbers. So I got all kinds of options. I think I'm going to grab a block. And when I'm stamping, I do like to use something spongy. So I'll put my circle on here and I find I get a better image that way than putting it on a hard surface. And I'm going to get some black ink. And here's a block. So let's do a couple of these. This is my first time using these ones. And this is just like a little postage. Doesn't matter what black ink you have, or you may choose to uh, to use uh, brown. And it doesn't matter how I stamp because I can flip it around. That's cool. So we're just going to do a bunch of different stamps on all of these. This is just like a little zigzag. This is fun. Huh, looks like stitches. I like that. That one's fun. I think I'm going to use that again. This part will take us a little few minutes, but I'm okay with that. I hope you guys are okay with that. And then there's a word there that says priority. I don't think I'm going to use that one. Put this back in there. And then I have some that are just like circle splats. So they're like that. That'll be cool. And I'm not going to put it right in the center. I'm just going to... Oh, I like that. That's a cool one. And these ones are the All and Create. You guys got many of their stamps so you stamp her when you're doing journal art you do need some background stamps because they just come in handy all the time and I like the black as it kind of uh, really pops from the page Are you guys working on anything fun? I do believe Heather's getting on tonight, is she not? Unless that plan changed. But I thought they were getting on for a little show and tell. I've been busy purchasing, holy jumpins. I don't craft a whole lot during the summer, but it doesn't stop me from buying. The, the stuff that's coming out is gorgeous. Now these are two. This is the first time I'm using these, so I'm actually going to cut them. And don't be afraid to cut your stamps. I'm just going to cut it around the image. I do it all the time, especially when it's like two stamps like this here where 
I'm not going to always want two light bulbs together. Oh, I like that. I like that light bulb. There's something about light bulbs. And there's something about a dirty stamp that I like as well. It just tells me that I've used it and it's been loved. And uh, I'm not one of these fuss, fuss pots that looks to get the stamps perfectly clean. Because that way I know that I've used them. I'm going to put these back on. Well, actually, I'll put them on this side. I like showing the picture on the front of my package. So that's way I know I know what's in there. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh, the bees. I think I need a couple of little bees. Yeah, I never noticed that they did this. They, they have them all together, which is fine. I'm just going to cut them apart. Bear with me. There's one little bee. You just be careful you don't chop off their legs. There. So that's a big bee. I know I'm not going to use the big bee. But I am going to use these little bees and you can get fussy and cut closer but I'm okay with that oh you're so cute there's one Here's another one. I think I'll put this one here. And I think I will clean them up, but I'll do it off camera. I'll just cut around them a little bit better so that all that red rubber isn't hanging hanging off. It just helps you place them a little bit, position them a little bit better. Um, what else? What other ones do I have here? I have the pentacles. Now those ones I would not cut um, apart. They're not meant to, meant to be cut apart. They're kind of all together. going to turn this upside down and have the pencils coming off just like that and I still really don't know where this this page is going I just I'm just doing what I feel like doing And then for my last few, I'm just going to move these over. And I may not use all of these. I'm going to take these last few that I have. There's some small ones. There's a big one. And this stamp. I'm actually going to leave it right on that piece of plastic and I'm going to do them all at once. So I'm going to squish them together and what gets hit with the ink gets hit and what doesn't, doesn't.
all the stamping I'm going to do for now. So now I'm going to bring back my journal book. I'm going to see where I want to place these. I'm going to get rid of my punches, make room. I love the EK Success uh, punches. And I have a mixture, EK Success, and then these are We Are Memory Keeper. So whichever, whichever brand. So I'm just going to see what this looks like. I just want some overlapping. And of course, I'll try to put a mixture of, of the different patterns on each side. Little groups of three maybe. But I want to do some, um, I know when I get down to the inky bits, I want to do some rough tracing. Definitely want this brighter orange over here. Mm. Another little bee up here. Maybe I am going to use them all. I kind of like how that looks. So without dwelling on it too much, we're going to stick it down. at my background though and I'm wondering if I want to stencil on it before. No, I think I'll put these down and then I'll stencil on top of it. And the numbers can be upside down. Like I said, when it comes to journaling, the more imperfect it is, the better I like it. Because it's not supposed to be what I call perfect. Like everything, it's not like a scrapbook page or a card where linear lines are important. This is just putting stuff down and then seeing where it takes you. Where I where I kind of get picky at is in the detail work. So the the highlighting. That's why I rarely show that part on on camera because it can take me an hour. It can take me 2 days where I just leave it and come back to it, leave it and come back to it until I feel like it's finished. Anybody know for sure if there's a live tonight with Heather and Dan? I do want my pencils pointing down though, so that one I'll make sure that it's the right way or the, my right way. It's posted. Awesome, Judy. Thanks. OK, 
Okay, so we're getting there. Just drop that in water. Whenever you're not using your brush, just throw it in a, in a glass of water just so that it doesn't um, stick all your bristles together. And I am going to grab my heat gun, my drawing tool, and give this a quick dry. Anybody watch the Tim Holtz reveal yesterday on his new Distress products? That Tim Holtz, I'm telling you, he's got to calm down. Because I never want it until I watch him demo it. And then I want it all. There. So I'm not going to cook it. I'm just going to dry it a little bit just so that we can get the next layer down. And we do have our little solo cup. And I do want to draw in some of that turquoise. So I'm going to take some of the paint. So it's my, it's the Stamperia turquoise. Give it a shake. And I do like working on my glass mat because I can put whatever I need to on it and it just cleans up very nice. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint and I'm just going to twirl my cup. Well, here we go. Let's give it a try. I like that. This would look nice. Um, I think I got these at the dollar store, these little solo cups. It would look nice as a coffee stain. This one I don't anticipate it will be right even because it's going over the seam. Not bad. And one more down here. Here. I don't want this one right in line with that one. So I think I'm going to put it over here. I started to watch Tim Holtz, but he said it would be about two hours. So yeah, so that's what I did. I finished watching it. I started, I watched a little bit of it yesterday for the live. Um, and then I watched the rest of it when I was on the treadmill this morning. Now you can use the other end of your solo cup. I think this will make more solid because it's not as raised, but that's all right. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, not bad. I love circles. I, I do. I like creating the circles. There's just something about them that I enjoy. Uh, here, there. Maybe here. Looks good, Carol? Good. And now, before I wake that up, I'm just going to get another paintbrush. And I'm looking for a round brush. That one's not very... Oh, I see my round brush. So like a round brush is good for splatters. And I'm going to wet this down, though. A lot. I just need a little bit. But I'm just taking water and I want it really runny because I want to do some splatters. Really runny. And I think that's going to be good. Oh, where are you going at? You going to town? Oh, okay. Is he still here? No, it's my ticket. Okay. Have a good night. Yep. 
Love you. And I, you know what? I think I want a little bit of black. Bubbly. What do you mean, Carol? Carolyn? Bubbly. It looks bubbly. I think I want some black. And I do have some black paint. Oh, the page looks bubbly. Yeah, I'm not sure why I wanted circles. I was just looking at my paper and I was trying to think, you know, what is it that I want on there that I haven't done yet? And circles come to mind. And maybe it is because it's spring and I remember being a kid and for grading gifts often in June, we would get bubbles. And I love bubbles to this day. I love blowing bubbles. So maybe there was something in the bubbly Carolyn that I related to and just didn't recognize. So a little bit of black. I want to be a little gentle with the black, but I do like a black splatter. There, that's enough. Because we haven't done our stenciling yet. It's coming together. I'm liking it. What are you thinking? Is this something that you think you could partake in? Bubbles are easy though too, right? Because you can, covers off of any product, you can make a circle. I like it. We'll try it for sure. The other thing I want to try when you're talking about bubbly, and I have never done it, uh, Vicki Booten, I'm sure some of you watched her lives. She does this technique where she does make bubbles, um, takes a cup and puts a little sudsy water and a straw and makes all kinds of bubbles, but she tints it. So she'll put like a, a drop of some color in it. And then she touches her paper to the bubbles and dries it. It's very nice. It's, the effect of it is very lovely. So I do want to make sure that these are pretty dry just so that I don't drag the black, especially when I'm going through modeling paste with my stencils. And you know these people, I don't know who they are, but I figure it's just, it's a representation, right? It's not the real deal. If you have your own pictures and you want to put in there, by all means. So let's see what I brought out for stencils. This is a Vicky Booten stencil and it's more circles. like this and it's got words so I do like that and some of them will fall right over but you know what hmm I'm not going to do modeling paste with this one this one would be great for inking but modeling paste uh, that would be a lot of paste on my page so I think I'm gonna you get you get it in real life Carol it's like a popcorn brain that goes off and whether it makes sense or not um, I just put it out there and hopefully some of what I'm saying resonates so I have modeling paste again my baby wipe but that one's also messy so I'm going to ditch this one too I'll give myself some new 
covers after tonight. And I have this brush. It's a silicone brush. It's from Finnebar or Prima. This one's the two inch and you can get an inch one. And it's really nice for dragging stuff through. I like using this for um, the gesso when I'm doing large gesso areas. But for modeling paste, I don't know. I think I'm going to stick with a palette knife just because this is another Vicky Booten. And um, it's circle designs, but I, I want to be a little purposeful as to where I put my modeling paste down. This is a good one. This is a Nouveau one. Um, and again, it's silicone. I got all these tools because you know a girl's got to have her tools. So I'm going to do this big circle one here. Modeling paste is, I have thick gesso as well. Modeling paste is almost like a thick gesso. So if you don't have modeling paste, use your gesso. I'm going to put one down here. One thing I did not do is I did not take a pan of water in with me to dump my stencil in as soon as I'm done. So I will run to the sink and throw it in because you don't want to leave modeling paste, especially on your stencils. It will harden and it will just, it, it might get stuck into your little prints and it just makes it so that the next time you use it, your print's not as clear. I'll put one here, the crosses. Oh, almost slipped with that. Yes, you absolutely could use your stencil butters. A nice gold stencil butter. Oh, I had a turquoise one. Never even thought of that, Carolyn. I'll do that next time. But I do have a turquoise one that would have been nice. I think I'm going to go right in the circle with this one. Stencil butters and even um, something else that would work is your... Um, liquid pearls. You know those little bottles of liquid pearls we all have. You could put some of those down and push them through. Do a little one over here. And another one over here. Just because, you know, oh, I like working in threes. There. So just give me a minute. I'm going to put my remaining modeling paste in my container. Make sure I get it all off. And I'm going to run this run this to the sink. You guys, if anybody else comes in, say hello for me. I'll be right back. media stuff you need like eight arms you need to be an octopus I'm just going to put the cover on that for now because I don't like leaving any of my mediums open and then when I'm done I will go put the saran wrap in a baby wipe so I'm going to dry this a little bit 
just a little bit. If you do um, put too much heat on your modeling paste, it will become puffy, like puffy. But then it, when it draw, it cools down, it just goes back down. It's no biggie. And you might like that effect, especially if you're spraying something, uh, spraying a color over your modeling paste. You might like that cracky look. these. So I think I'll end up putting some in the circles. This is where my thought process is going anyway. And these are Tim Holtz product. And we have this big flower that I pulled out of my stash just for the color. And once I take it out, I tell myself I'm using it. So it is going to land on there somewhere. I'm just not right sure yet. And then I have this bird. So I might even put the bird on top of the flower. Like this. And then I'm going to do shading. And I think I will use my words and that stamp that I have here I'm going to stamp that out on white so let me see where whatever where it is again it says certain things capture the eye but pursue only those that capture the heart so I'm I think I'm going to stay I know I'm going to stamp this out on white and I'm going to cut around just freehand each word and paste them down coming down the center of this but I really want my modeling paste to dry at this point. I want it to get right nice and hard so that um, when I do my shading, it's not going to get into a messy situation. And then I'm also going to use probably the Tim Holtz crayons and do some sort of edging around the entire thing. We did that to one of our other ones. Maybe it was, it was the first one. So I did some... Uh, deep purple edging on that one and I did black on this one I don't do it all the time but I do like the look of the edging and then that this one was our March one love the stars this one was our April I'm not sure which one's my favorite they all have a little bit of something. Uh, this one was May. This one was a challenge for red for me because I'm not a big red person. But I love how this turned out. And this is what I mean by shading. So like in here I took pencil crayons, just regular pencil crayons. And just shaded in some of the red even deeper. The same here with the pink. So that's kind of what I do for shading. I find some part. May is pretty. Thank you. Yep, they're all kind of pretty in their own way. So I know I'm going to do shading around these circles. So whether it be whatever color from one of these colors, I'll pick out and I'll do shading. Or it could be a neutral. Maybe it's going to be a gray or something that will tie it together. Um, and you can even put words inside of these. So like maybe I put my wing somewhere different and when I cut out my words I put them in the bubbles. I don't know yet. That will be a surprise for when I come back and show you. And I'm really not feeling this rose. I have to say I'm not feeling it. So it's not going back in my stash because that's my own rule when it comes out. I'm not putting it back. So, it might get sacrificed, but I'm okay with that too. No, I, I just, I'm just not feeling the rose. 
I don't know. I might change my mind when I get to do the shading. So tonight was kind of a quick one. It's the bases. And I'm going to do my shading. I'm going to do some edging around here. Of what? I don't know. I might just do some freehand little scrolls. Um, going to stick the wings down. I do like the look of the wings and some words and put the month on. And I will show you it when it's done. And I will be watching live with you all tonight. I enjoy your company. It is summer, so I appreciate anybody who pops in. And again, they're always recorded, so you can come back a little later. Always fun to watch and get ideas. That's awesome, Carolyn. That's what that's why we do these things is for uh, inspiration purposes. So I've met my gold and we will see us later and I'll come back and show you the finished product. See you for now.